everyone and welcome back to the Triforce podcast. Today, joined by Sips. Good morning. He- hello. Hello. And Period Flax. Why good morning? Well, good good, good day, sir. Well, good morning What a lovely you. day it is oh. today to do a podcast. Ain't wow, it just, I'm ready to go. Ain't it just. Hit me. What's all the, what's all the latest, hottest happenings around your area? Well, Fill me in. It's, uh, I'm, about, I'm about 20 meters from the ocean. Uh, it's about 26, 27 degrees here in the Grand Canaria, um, and it's uh, pretty beautiful. Oh my god, is that where you are? Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. I didn't right. realise you were going to the Canary Islands. Yeah, I'm right. jealous. My, my turn, my turn. Jealous AF. I'm, uh, I'm about 20 metres from the ocean, and <laughs> it's about 13 degrees, uh, cloudy, pretty grey out, uh, windy as usual. And I'm in Jersey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm in Bristol. I'm about twenty minutes from the ocean. Um, <laughs> it's not really an ocean though. It's really shit. It's cold actually. You're was, close was... to Hinkley. Hinkley C though, right? Hinkley B. Hinkley. Hinkley something. The big the power plant. Thing. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. true. We are. That's, yeah, that's, that's gotta be. So, that's gotta be worth celebrating a little. No, you get some <laughs> three-eyed fish and stuff. Well, well I think everyone's on. close to a nuclear power plant. They just don't necessarily know. There's lots of nuclear power plants around. What are you powered by on Jersey? Uh, nuclear power that we import from France. Right. That's why the whole the whole fishing oh. uh, row thing was so. Um, was such a big deal because France actually threatened to cut the power supply to Jersey, and eighty percent of uh, Jersey's power is imported from France. So uh, it, would, it would have been a big, big one for sure. So P Flax is slapping sun cream on his head and going out into the wonderful weather. Yeah. Uh, how, how long have you been there? Have you just been there at the weekend? This. Let me um, think. We got here on Saturday, so yesterday was our first full day, and now obviously, I mean, Mrs F and the kids have gone for a walk while we're doing the the podcast here and nice then- nice you're gonna owe her a couple of mojitos later i guess i feel, I, I, can, I i know i can tell that you've got a like a, sm- a smile on your face that the mood has just lifted and that like you're you're happier and i'm i'm getting some additional smile just from that i'm gonna be busy all day guys it's a, a day-long podcast that uh, you got dota on your uh, laptop i think i do but I, I i can i can't really play dota on, on the laptop it's so bad i was just getting back into it when i uh when I was back after TI, because I only really managed one or two games over that two weeks. So I was kind of rusty, even worse than usual. And right. then I got, got back, I was just getting settled again. Um, and then we were straight off again that, that weekend, because it was Mrs. F's birthday last weekend. So to celebrate, we, uh, we went away. But let me tell you something, at the airport, uh, going through the bag check where you put it on the little conveyor belt and everything, and the, uh, one of the security guards said to me, uh, off, off anywhere nice and I thought oh that's weird he's making conversation I said I was just off to, to the Canary Islands he goes oh I have a lovely time he goes uh, other than that everything alright I was like yeah he goes well by the way I have a tiny penis <laughs> <laughs> oh no yeah. oh yeah. no Wow. That is something, yeah. eh? Yeah. So he knew before we did where you were going. <laughs> he did. Jeez, yeah. I was just geez. expecting him to go, aha, Triforce podcast, eh? Full body cavity here, please. Yeah. Just send me <laughs> oh off to some, some room. Imagine he's giving me. you the full the, the full cavity search and he's like, <laughs> Sir, it appears that you have a smaller penis than mine, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> he's, no, he knew you the whole time. Giving you and the then full you're like, cavity. is that a Triforce reference or is that just it's just, just being oh, you're just doing a really good job down there yeah. uh <laughs> do, searching my cameras. yeah so yeah i'm jealous uh greg claire isn't the one that had the volcano no that rutting. was las palmas las right. palmas right. yeah that's yeah. over to the uh to the west i was hoping can you that see the plume not not from the ground here um no but they obviously these are all volcanic it's a volcanic op- archipelago so we're gonna go up the volcano uh tomorrow oh. um, and have a look it, it's dormant as far as i know or at the very least what's it called is it called td mount td it's a really tall one isn't it i don't know okay. it's pretty big it's um, uh it's called kilimanjaro i think <laughs> 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 But they, do they have an observatory on one of them? I can't remember. Yeah, there is an observatory but, here. I saw it on the map, but I don't know if that's on the, the caldera of the volcano or not. It might well be active, but as I understand it, there's some some uh, some. I think they were all pretty active. Actually. Yeah, yeah, but there's some shelf of rock attached to Las Palmas, I think. 
for comments to correct me, but there'll be some big explosion and that thing will fall into the sea at some point and cause a massive earthquake. Um, Holy crap. Tidal wave. Um, so I'm hoping that doesn't happen this week. No, oh, yeah. Uh, but was, yeah um... You can drive right up to the top of the, the volcano and walk around it. Um, but I kind of scared my kids into not wanting to go hiking at all, possibly ever, by telling them about that That's family. That's got to be a good thing. How did well, you do Well, I it? don't like hiking. Well, there no. was this news story recently about this family. I think it was in California. I think it was in California. I could be wrong. And uh, it was a husband and his wife and their daughter and their dog. I think, and they went off strolling about like idiots on a hot day with insufficient water and they all died. They found them close together and they'd all died of uh, extreme heat and dehydration. Jeez. And right. I was trying to explain to my daughter how dangerous it is when people just go off wandering about with like a fucking glass of water's worth of water thinking it'll be fine and how nature is actually not going to not gonna fuck about. And if you, uh, I think in, in like 40 degree temperature or 35 degree temperature, you lose about a liter of water an hour. So you need to keep drinking that much or like a liter an hour, I think it is. If I remember my Ray Mears, um, you, you got to drink that much to stay just level. So yeah, it, that was in Dune yeah, as well. <laughs> I, I haven't Dune seen the, the new one. Oh, is it? Oh. Very, I'm, I'm imagining the people hiking are just idiots. Wearing uh, their still suits like, incorrectly. They need, they need the still suits. Yeah. yeah I, I liked it. It was quite good, actually. Right. Um, it was. I, I'm obviously very familiar with Dune. I read the book when I was a kid. I've read it relatively recently. I like the universe, and the old film was just wacky. Oh, I love that. I, never, uh, one... I never saw the old film. I never read the book. My introduction to Dune and all I know about Dune is the RTS game from like the June 2000, the early the 90s OG. or whatever. It's yeah. a great game. Yeah. I mean, a lot, everything that's come since Dune's a bit dated in a sense because it was such a pivotal, iconic piece of work that it's inspired everything that came since. You know, the Emperor is like the one from 40K and his sergeant car are the Space Marines and the Navigators are kind of like similar to Space Marines. And But every other sci-fi universe has picked a little bit of Dune for themselves and used it, the great houses and all these things. So yeah. it's very um, familiar sci-fi world, but still very cool. Um, and a great, great visuals, um, good mood, good movie. Mm. Um it's obviously part one, which they sort of don't advertise in the trailers or it's not really. I didn't really realize it was only the first half of the book. Right. So I sort of it got to a point where someone said, this is only the beginning. And I was like, right, that's the last line. If that's not the last line of the movie, then I'm a monkey's uncle. And it <laughs> went for like a couple more minutes and it was the last line of the movie. So I was like, yeah, that's that's the end of part one, isn't it? I mean, um, honestly, no, it's, the, it's good. I love the, the original film, the, the David Lynch one was a, a classic, a cult classic, I think, because um, for a start, it's David Lynch. So you know it's going to be very, have some original ideas and it's going to be bonkers and it's going to oh, have yeah. great great actors and all the rest of it. And I, I think it was great. And I read the book and then I saw the film and I was like, it obviously doesn't stay particularly true to the to the book quite a lot of the time. Um, <clears throat> there's a whole bunch of stuff with the like the sound gun that they have. That's not in the book. Um the weirding modules and all this kind of stuff, that's not in the book. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that isn't in there. Like, for some reason, the Harkonnens make Thufa Hawet milk a small cat, and it's got a rat strapped to it. I mean, that's just pure David Lynch bonkersness. The heart plugs, I don't remember those from the book. Um, all kinds no. of things like that. So I, I love the fact that David Lynch took it and wasn't afraid to chuck in his own bonkers ideas. Yeah. Um, and I, I just think it's it's fantastic, even if the problem is telling us the book like June. To, I, honestly, I'm not being funny, but that, that era, I don't think audiences were ready for that kind of film. I think if you look at the other films that came out around that time, especially big blockbusters, they were a lot What year did it come out? 83, something oh, like okay, that. Yeah. I'll look it up anyway. Yeah. I think it was um, 84, 83. 83, 84. Yeah, I mean, the original Ghostbusters came out in, like, 84, right? Yeah, so Around it was 1984. Yeah. Um, a lot of the films that came out in 1984, uh, I don't think were particularly... Uh, let's have a look. 1984 movies. Uh, 1984 in film. So Beverly Hills Cop was the number oh, one film. Oh, yeah. Notable films released in 1984. You had uh, 1984, of course. They released that in 1984. Uh, 2010, the sequel to 2001, uh, which was pretty, pretty out there. But it was... It was not particularly sci-fi. It was a bit... If you watch it, it it's okay. Uh, the Bounty with Mel Gibson, Anthony Hopkins, Lawrence Olivia, Daniel Day-Lewis, Liam Neeson. That was a, a 
great movie. Um, there were a lot of sort of odd films that came out that year. It was a, a bit weird. When but did I feel like, like uh, Lethal Weapon and the first Lethal Weapon and like Predator and uh, the first Terminator and all those? I want to say that they were, I mean, the first like Terminator, I think, well, right? was 82. Yeah. Um, so the first Terminator was not, uh, Terminator 2 was 1991. So let's look at the Terminator film series. The first one, I will be with you in a moment. I love that. I love that name. Like what an idea <laughs> for a, the name yeah. of a movie. The Terminator. The Terminator. Oh my okay, God. So, so that also came out in 1984. All right. Um, okay. But the sort of sci-fi, the sort of highest sci-fi thing about that was um, essentially the time travel element, right? But it's not yeah. like... It's not like June, which is bonkers. I just don't think an audience... I mean, if you think about Inception, Inception was a quite a high concept film. It didn't really uh, explain itself all the way through. No. And it was a big hit. And I, I think yeah. modern audiences are a bit more ready to accept those kind of very, very high concept movies. Whereas I think back in the 80s, perhaps we weren't. Like The Sixth Sense, when you yeah, find out that guess. Bruce Willis was uh, all along, he could um, yeah. he could see dead people. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I wouldn't call that a particularly yeah. high concept movie, but sure. No, it's just, it's just an example. You know? <laughs> it's a poor yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just using it as a um, little example. Well, I, I think that, well, I mean, you should, some of the flipping weird films I've seen lately have been, oh my God. Very high concept and bad, though. In fact, I don't really want my movies to be like an artistic fucking wankathon. I, I'm quite no. happy with them, with them being a roller coaster. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I'm, a, I just, I'm like the complete opposite. I I I I wholeheartedly accept a wankathon. Like, in fact, that's <laughs> what I I go for. Like, Give us an example. Well, um, uh, <laughs> Wankin Cox, I can't do that. Big Wankin Cox uh -huh. Four was probably the best mm. movie I've seen uh, this year so far. We've mentioned big them. throbbing, veiny, oily penises. Um, was a was a smash hit for sure. That's a that's a nice one too. I love that. Anyway. One. And, um, there, there are always people out in the hot desert rods, 69. who don't prepare themselves for properly, you know, especially in America. America seems seems so safe, right? Especially like California. But actually, you know, if it's like 42 degrees. I, I disagree. I don't think California that's, is that safe. I, I actually think a lot of sort of the more remote parts of the US and, and Canada are pretty dangerous if, you, if you're not prepared for it. Like not just hydration and stuff but these are vast areas of sort of like um uh, untouched wildlife and stuff right so mm. you 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 will happen across bears and like coyotes and and whatever while you're out there right and if you don't if you're not sure like how to be around them or, or or deal with them or whatever then you know you could you could get into into some trouble for sure like big there's like big in california especially isn't there like big wild cats and stuff like um out out in the uh out, there's a out, lot of uh, i mean all over america even though yeah. most states are pretty wild right it's yeah. like so much uh space i think especially if, if you go if you look at california an awful lot of it is just mountains and and hills and uh extreme yeah. temperatures so people i don't know who the fuck thinks of walking out into that kind of heat is a good idea i don't i don't understand it, it was 42.8 degrees oh that's too hot it's way too hot I mean, like, and they had a, they hmm. had a one year old child. By oh, by the way, yeah, that's. I mean, that is a fucking tragedy. But at the that same is time, a tragedy. Get yeah. your fucking head out of your ass, and please don't do stupid shit like that in the world. What are you thinking? I guarantee you, anyone who knows what they're doing, and there are a lot of Americans because it's a very wild country. A lot of Americans really take it very seriously, the whole hiking and survival stuff. I bet they're appalled at the tragedy, but they're also thinking, "What the fuck are you doing? Don't yeah. let the side down. Come on." We're better than that. I think it's so easy though to slip into that. I mean, the, the thing is, like, the world is pretty idiot proofed. Um, and you know, I found this going to Japan and Sweden and places like this. Like, I've turned up there and I can't figure out, I can't talk the language, I can't get a ticket, I haven't got anything prepared. And yet, I still, there's always someone there who's like, Do you need help? Are you an idiot? Oh, in a, okay. in a big city, <laughs> all, always there will be, right? Like, it, they, they're, they're used to lots of idiots arriving, right? So, they, well, you think big, big cities are welcoming to idiots and will help them? They're out. not welcoming to idiots but they're easily they're easier for idiots to navigate i think oh cities i thought you meant cities. people in cities were no no out. i'm not, not talking about people in cities i think <laughs> right, just right. cities in general I think that like, too though i think generally that too like you you, you think that it's gonna everyone's gonna be a bastard but actually i think generally people are helpful nice people there's always gonna be helpful nice people around there sure. you know, just because you're not I'm just, I know, like, I, I help people out. A lot of people are always asking me for directions because I look old enough that I'll know things. 
And I clearly I don't give off the vibe of a local because I move at pace and I clearly know where I'm going. So right. a lot of people will say, excuse me, these trends. And you just say, yeah, where are you going? And then you give them a clue, even though there's a fucking huge map. Oh, man. Well, I'm not talking about the people who want you to do their work for them. No, but um, those people, but I, I, in my experience, are the worst, though, because... And again, just from my experience, but I find like nine times out of 10, if somebody asks you for directions somewhere, they're not listening to the answer, right? Like, really? I, I, yeah, I'm being like pretty clear and concise with my instructions. Like I know my way around, especially like where I live and stuff. And I'm like, you know, keep going straight down this road. You'll see like this, this type of building. Oh, but that's all they want. Take wanted. a left here or whatever. And they're like, just straight down this road and just keep going straight. No, no. When you get to the building, you need to turn left. They're just like not listening at all. You that's know? right. Like they, all they wanted was that first sentence. Because yeah. then they're going to ask someone else when they get to get further down. I wonder maybe they, if they, I wonder if maybe they're just like uh, holding out, like hoping that you'll just offer to take them or just phone <laughs> them a taxi or something. Because like they, they're just not listening to <laughs> the right. explanation. Like, uh, I find this happens a lot, actually. I have noticed that a couple of times. Once, once you've told them the first sentence, they're done. They don't want any more. That's enough for them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they, like, their eyes glaze over and you can yeah, tell yeah. they're not the interested. Their brain is just melting out of their ears because you've you've, you've thrown in a left. A left, right. a left at a landmark <laughs> building. Like, it's not that fucking hard. Like, geez. And <laughs> in, in the day and age where you have a phone with a map on it, like, that you can just type in, like, I'm lost, and it'll it'll pretty much tell you where to go. Like, come on. That's it's true. It's not that hard geez yeah it's weird that people do still ask me for direction they usually ask me for directions with a phone in their hand yeah. as well yeah and then that causes me to get my phone out and then we're both like comparing our phones so we're like oh well, no you're here you're here so i mean it's like oh yeah but you're where the dot is you know it's like oh yeah oh my god you, i don't know you never get people I, asking for to go to a specific place though right they're always like a bit sort of um uh withholding about where exactly they're going right because I guess most of them are just like, they want to come up to you and they want to say, hey, how do I get to Hooters? But, you know, they don't want to say that. They don't want to be seen as the person right. who's asking for directions to Hooters. So they're like, hey, do you know where um, Smith Street is? <laughs> like, <it> just, <laughs> right, you know, yeah. like it's all... Whereas if, they, if they'd said the dentist, you would be like, oh, there's some dentists over there. Are these the ones? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. But they, they don't want to tell you that much. No. They'd rather just sort of give... I get it. Like, you know, it's a stranger. You know, you don't want to tell them. Yeah. You, you, this is hard coded in not to talk to strangers. Yeah. You know, especially about, you know, where you're going. Mm. Uh, where's Bristol Colonoscopy Lab? <laughs> 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 yeah, it's not. I suppose there is some reasons why they may want to tell you. But no, uh, hiking up uh, Mount TD, apparently, I, I, I was aware of this. It's freezing cold up there. Because it's actually, it drops to like five degrees. It's five degrees there at the moment, according to Google. Minus five degrees at the moment, according to Google, um, on Mount TD. Light freezing rain, it says. Um, so wait, you might have to wear your jacket, Pete Flack. Yeah, no, there. it's... Um, and you so might, in fact, freeze to death instead of well, quite. boil to death. The, the lady yeah. that uh, that manages the house we're staying in, um, it's like an Airbnb. So the guy who owns it just got uh, a local German lady to, to run the place. Um, right. Have you she said, have you checked for cameras and like the alarm clocks and the and no because I'm not insane fire alarm so, and stuff like no. that she she uh, if she they said, want to film his bald head snoring like go for it wow word said, of advice flax before fine. you go to bed you know every carry night carry on carry on I'll just <laughs> you ask a question I begin to answer it and then sorry suddenly, sorry that's sorry. Okay. So you have your, you, one of your We're usual paranoid rants about other people. <laughs> no, to I to was just calls or whatever. No, I was just going to say get in there before they do, and every night before you go to bed, just spread your cheeks and um, and direct your gaping asshole directly at like the fire alarm in the bedroom, just for like five <laughs> minutes or whatever, and then go to sleep. That's all I was going to say. That? Why? That's what for the camera. <laughs> Why else? <laughs> Just, but know, why, why do you constantly think that's that, why they're filming, that right? people that come to your door try to kill you? That if you go anywhere, they're trying to film you? Like, you, I you read, live in Jersey. No, I read you don't the, live in the middle of a war zone. The problem is, is I read the news sometimes. I watched that YouTube video as well about the guy, the cameras that you could see in like the, the fire alarms yeah, and yeah. the clock sockets. Man, yeah. that fucking was And the crazy. alarm clocks and stuff. That was too, crazy. Right? Yeah. Uh, anyway. I'm not sorry, being paranoid. Thanks. I was just making No, you are being paranoid. No, no. 
I was just joking around. Anyway, carry on. Yeah, sorry. Airbnb. I've, I've forgotten now what. Um... You're living there. You're, you're staying there. She, the lady said it was oh, cold. Oh, that's right. So she said that it can be, if it's like 26 degrees where we are here, it can be as cold as four or five degrees at the top because it's that high up. But oddly enough, I was expecting the route up there to be like, I don't know if you've ever been to Greece or somewhere mountainous like that. Um, all the roads are like spaghetti that's been cooked and then spilled on the floor. And it's like right. winds unbelievably very perilously close to uh, cliff tops and mountain tops. And I was really worried about driving up there, but I've looked and it's all pretty snazzy roads. It's one road. You just take one road and it's got one twisty bit. I was like, how have they achieved this? So I don't know what they've done, but the roads in Grand Canary are actually top notch there. So we should be all right. It, mm, did it, was it like, because sometimes they have like, they get the military to build these roads for observatories out in the middle of nowhere. I seem to recall that was done in New Zealand or somewhere. Like, I don't know. Like, so yeah, they, they I think it might have been part of the observatory funding to get these things, you know, because mm. they needed to get the, the, the materials up there and stuff. And then it gives them like this kind of it's like because the, the all of the Grand, all the all the Canary Islands are basically a volcano. Yeah. Um and so they the road always runs in a ring around the coast. Um and that's where all the tourist stuff is. But then in the middle is usually one road that cuts cuts across the middle, but it goes up really fucking high. So it's actually just far quicker to go around the coast on on like the motorway maybe plus the, the climate is like it's just it's amazing that it drops 20 degrees in like a 10 minute car ride it's pretty crazy it's pretty well, the higher up you go right like um it'll just it'll just get it start to get colder and but colder. what is the uh what is the rate at which altitude affects temperature like is it 100 meters equals oh uh, one it's degree? a really simple equation actually it's uh e equals <laughs> mc squared uh, to I the see. power of um two uh, no, i don't know i have no idea but uh, it, it, right. it it is just the way it goes. Like um, like I remember I'm when sure we were, it is a- when I was a kid, we went we went we drove from um, from coast to coast, Canada, started in the east and ended up in the west. We had to drive through the Rocky Mountains, and some of them the roads go like up, not to the very top of the mountain, but like you know they instead of tunneling through every goddamn mountain because there's like a million of them, you know the roads are built sort of like alongside the mountains or whatever. You end up driving like to higher altitudes. And sometimes you're driving, there's just like clouds going by your car and stuff. It's pretty cool. So but, it's uh, 1,000 meters. It's cold. Every, every 1,000 meters, the temperature goes down by six and a half degrees. That's the standard. That's yeah, the average right. like difference. That's pretty insane. I mean, and then they're saying like global warming, but it's like cold up there. So I don't get it. <laughs> you know? You know? Yeah. yeah. Shit. Explain that one. So does that mean if you like dug out a big trench, okay? Like a thousand meters deep, mm. does it go up six degrees? Yeah, or... I mean because I, I know that when no, they, no, it's uh, cold underground. Have you ever lived in a basement before? It's, it's like when they cold go down, there. down, like with the drills and things like that, it gets hotter, doesn't it? I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, it does. Well, well, yeah, right. after really a does. certain point, but it gets cold first, right? Like the I don't, I don't know. I mean, if you're talking about it just being damper underground, then no, sure, like but... okay, well, I don't know, Lewis. I never took you, but like you know the the German underground hospital um, over here, the one that's oh yeah. It's cold as shit in there. Every time we go to Jersey, you tell me about this tourist attraction. You're like, we're not going to go there. Uh, I mean, <laughs> like we can every, go. Next time you come over, single... we'll go. No, no, no. You seem so unenthusiastic about yeah, it every I've time you tell me. too many times. You're like, uh... It's... But how far underground is it a thousand meters underground? Oh, no, it's not. It's like... Because I think if you went a thousand meters underground, it would get hotter, right? Like, I, I assume. Oh, a th- yeah, so. a thousand meters for sure. That's really deep, though. Like, that's... Yeah. You, like, I, I don't know. Well, how, does want, work, right? if, it, how does it work if... How does it work when you go deep underground like will your would, will you, would your ears like pop the same as they would you so, know, like if you're going yeah up? they're saying this is geologists calculate that for every mile you dig beneath the earth's surface the temperature rises by 15 degrees fahrenheit i don't know what that is in centigrade That's and like the pressure increases simultaneously at a rate of about 7300 pounds per square inch holy so crap. the pressure starts to get pretty 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 peppy what at what point do you think you start looking like um um, when Arnold Schwarzenegger's mask comes off when he tumbles down the hill in Total Recall outside in Mars and his yeah. eyes are like bulging out, like what point 
what, what point is the pressure so high that your eyes would start to uh, threaten to like leave their sockets? Well, I think that they would. The pressure would be on the outside, so your eyes wouldn't be pushing out. Oh, they'd they be would pushing be sucked in. in. They'd be so getting sucked in. You'd be able to see the inside of your own skull oh. at uh, two miles, I guess. <laughs> oh my god! Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> You'd make the same noise Dada though. Yeah. <laughs> I love the, the eye popping scene with my favorites because. Like, the dummy that they had, like the, the prosthetic for Arnie, really made the exact right Arnie face of him going... Yeah, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen the reboot, but from what I heard of the reboot, they've cut out all the stuff that made the original so good. Yeah, like they just three didn't, titties, they the didn't guy get with it. the weird arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they just, they missed it completely. Like I think I think modern modern filmmakers would look at it and think, oh, this is too schlocky and junky and Yeah, but that Verhoeven-y. was what was great about it. That's what it. made it ridiculously yeah. fun with Verhoeven's, this, I mean, we would have a woman with sweet tits. The, the <laughs> scene at the end when uh, when, the, when, the dude, uh, when the dude's arms get ripped off on the <laughs> elevator, I mean, that was awesome. Awesome. That, that was, was Michael Ironside's arms. That's right. Yeah, his both of his arms. Yeah, ripped right oh, off. Shit. Oh, yeah, Sharon Stone was in the original too. Wasn't yeah, she, she was. Oh, oh my god, god, she was so fucking hot in that. She still Ooh. looks great, by the way, Sharon Stone. Yeah, I know. I know she we does. always talk about <laughs> women that were <laughs> hot in the nineties that are yeah. still somehow. Sharon Stone. <laughs> <pretty> <laughs> <rid of> that. <laughs> this is the, That's another one the, for you. The nineties <laughs> women appreciation <laughs> part. Oh, man, Sharon Stone is something else. Though. Michael yeah. Ironside, yeah. though, what a fucking. Who do you think is a modern day Sharon Stone now? Like I'd say that that um, the one that plays uh, the one that played Tonya Harding in uh, I Tonya and she was in Wolf of Wall Street and uh, oh the Margot Robbie yeah yeah she's she's like she's got to be like this this generation's Sharon Stone right like she looks I, great I mean if you think about Sharon Stone I think that Total Recall was one of her earlier roles because then of course she became the sort of 90s femme fatale because she was in quite a few films well because of basic instinct right? yeah because of like basic instinct one. so she and she became this kind of uh hot baddie yeah you know who you, you definitely wanted her but you also thought she's probably going to kill me but you know the deal was it's worth it you know so fair play um i mean she tries to kill Arnold Schwarzenegger in total recall yeah she's definitely a baddie in, in Basic, basic instinct, instinct. yeah. And uh, she's was that been Michael in other Douglas things. in Basic Instinct? You bet your balls it was. Man, do you know him and uh, Catherine Zeta Jones are still married? Yeah. And uh, their kids are like in their twenties now and stuff. It's crazy. God, that's nuts. I think yeah. I think it's um the woman from Gone Girl. What's her name? Rosamund Pike. What about Gemma? Charlize Theron? Gemma? Or is she like? She like a pre like a previous generation's Sharon. Charlie's Stone. She's a bit she's, older she's now. She's a femme right? fatale. I don't know. Well, if, she, I don't know. She she's she's um... man. She was so good in that. Uh, it, was it Monster? The yeah. the one about the uh, the 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 Florida serial killer, yeah, the, the yeah. woman serial killer. Holy crap! She she played she that role in like that. insanely good. Because there's like interviews with that woman and stuff as well, and I think she. Must have so, studied them or whatever, but she she did such a good job. It was crazy. So she was in, in Total Recall. She was the bad. She was a baddie in that who tried to kill fucking. Why why am I struggling? Arnold Schwarzenegger. My, my Sorry, I've got holiday brain. And then she was in basically the same Femme Fatale. Then Sliver. Sliver, yeah, that was the one with the Femme um, Fatale. Alec uh, Baldwin. Uh, uh, relating to, back to the 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 whole Airbnb yeah. cameras thing. Sliver was <laughs> was the landlord with all the computers, uh, the TV screens right. and cameras so all over, right? That was actually <clears throat> William Baldwin and Tom Berenger. Oh my God! Do you guys hear about Alec Baldwin? Yeah. That Speaking was of terrible. Baldwin, that's fucking nuts, eh? And then she was in Intersection. As a woman, woman who entices a bomb expert, she's involved with it into destroying the criminal gang that killed her family. So she's another femme fatale there. I don't know um, of any other. Oh, and in Casino, she was kind of a bad. Oh, she was really good well. in Casino. Holy yeah, she was great. She was awesome I think that was that. probably her best performance, in all honesty. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's interesting. I, I don't know if there are women that consistently play the hot bad guy um, the same way that they're... Uh, you know, I, I thought Kate Blanchett can do a good baddie, but I'd never think of her as a femme fatale because she was also... She's a, a fantastic com- act. act. She's great. Actor, actress. Yeah, good, actor, I think. Actor is now, right? That? Sorry. Oh my God, what's that woman's name? She's... She's she's she looks weird and it's quite severe and she's oh, she's yeah. being Tilda an alien. Dame, Judy Dench, Sigourney <laughs> Weaver, Tilda Swinton. Obviously, she's pretty serious yeah. bad guy. But she's woman. not. Yeah. She she plays too many different things. Are you talking about Sigourney yeah. Weaver? No, she's no, not. No. Oh, someone someone much more. She's a good guy. Man, she. I was. She's I watched guy. Ghostbusters one and two with my son the other day because we were. Uh, we were we were home with the baby while my wife and my daughter went uh, to town to do stuff or whatever. 
So we're like, because my daughter's too young and she finds Ghostbusters scary. So it was like a perfect opportunity for like the guys and the baby to watch Ghostbusters 1 and 2 because it's going to be Halloween soon. Man, those are those movies are fantastic. God, like you like I know I've seen them a million times. Not so much two, but the first one for sure. And um, every time I watch it, I'm it, it just blows my mind. Like uh, like how uh, creative it was and, and just 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 how how good of a movie it was. It still holds up like it's still really good. Like just a just a really good movie like for families and kids and stuff you know i wonder if the, this is classic i wonder if the, the death of the femme fatale trope is because i think women tend to be cast in different roles nowadays especially in the last few years where if you think about the films that where femme fatales were the most popular you know the, the old sort of uh, noir films was very much that women would generally be the sort of flappy airheads or yeah. evil <laughs> so they were like either these sort of uh you know this sort of idea that sex and uh, and sexiness in women was naturally uh, a bad guy trait. Yeah. Whereas nowadays, because of um, women being liberated sexually and and being able to play a more wider variety of roles, you don't get the woman as the bad guy in in that kind of femme fatale way. I mean, I'll be honest with you, Kate Blanchett in Thor Ragnarok, the one where she's the badass Hela, his sister. Uh, I would have fucking done whatever she told me. I'll be <laughs> I would have overthrown Asgard. Right. I've been told know. that uh-huh. it's amazing, but I have not seen it. It's very good. So she turns up, she kills Odin, and then she fucking, I think she smashes Thor's hammer up. She's, she's kind of a bitch, to be honest with you. She turns up at Asgard, kills a bunch of lads there, and then enslaves one guy. And I was like, I would be that guy. Like the guy who she says, you, peasant, you're going to work for me now and you'll get maybe a flash of leg now. And then I'll be like, absolutely, Queen Hela, I am in your care now. Do as you will. I'd be useless in these movies. You just, well, you, you would just be, you'd be the guy who's, you'd be the extra who gets his neck snapped by the woman's thighs or whatever. Do yeah, you know but I mean? he what a way go to out go, with a though, smile though. on his face. You yeah, know, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It would be a, a worthy yeah, end. Yeah, he'd enjoy I'd it. I'd be like, yes, master. Did mistress, you guys ever whatever. watch that show American Gods? No. I watched yeah, like yeah, an episode or two and there, I think it was like the second episode, there was a, a woman who was a, a god and um, she, but she was like, like a seducing god and she devoured a man through her vagina oh not not a great way to go honestly no. i don't mind my don't neck be being eaten. snapped by yeah. like a pair of very uh thunderous thighs but like i don't want to be eaten uh devoured whole like sarlacc pit style by yeah a no vagina. that's not cool like, that's, that's not because you've got long <laughs> enough to think about it and think oh then maybe not you know can i change my mind please i just don't want to yeah, be devoured by anything like if yeah, you're a, being, a small rodent eaten. and you get swallowed whole by a snake i mean that's got to be Pretty that's scary suck. stuff, right? Like, yeah, you're that's just gonna, gonna suck. Well, I think yeah. that was because she was the spider god, right? And the whole thing is they just, they devour their mate or whatever, don't they? Yeah. Do you remember? Oh, the I guess thing. so. Yeah. But also, they were like she. He was like. I didn't watch the whole thing. So body. I don't know. Well, they're all gods, aren't they? Yeah. The idea is that in, they're all that she's that she's sort of. I don't think she's a Nancy. Actually, she's some. She's actually not Spider One. Maybe she's maybe not Spider One at all. Maybe that's a different guy. Oh man, uh, I did watch it, but it was a while ago. It's a weird one. Eh? It's, I still liked I still liked American Gods for 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 a while. Yeah. It was it held my attention. I I'm not a big fan, honestly, of it. I I feel like some people it's, it feels to me a little bit just got a thing for vaginal of devouring. a wankathon. Yeah, I don't know. Like there's lots there's of lo- uh, lot from what I could tell from watching an episode or two. There was lots of lots of lots of like like sexual themes and stuff, right? Yeah, but it's fine. Um, I, I'm actually I thought it was actually better than the book, um, which I didn't like at all. I'm not. I feel like I, I've slowly grown off Neil Gaiman generally from what I mean Sandman was the comics that I read when I was a kid it was great but overall I'm just a bit like I'm not just a, not a fan of all the fairies and the, the, the worlds that he creates they're all so woolly right. um, and don't seem to have any rules they're all magic-y fancy f- wanky fanky fairies all floating about doing weird stuff in different dimensions going through doors into weird place and there's the Prince of the Fairies Can I be in there. I, I, Lewis, I, I am with you. I've never really been a big Neil Gaiman fan for that exact reason. I just found it a bit, you know, come on. It was. It's just, give, give me a break. 
That's how I feel about it. I, I get that when you're an, uh, an author, you have to leave things open, right? But it feels like if you leave everything too open, you just end up with nothing, mm. and n- nothing surprising because you don't really understand or appreciate the world you're in. I just feel like, yeah, when you don't have any rules, things don't make sense. And it's frustrating, oh. you know. Yep. I just stick to the rules, man. Make some rules. Yeah, make up. We some, can all agree. Make some rules and thing. follow the rules. Um, listen, I got a I got a product recommendation for you guys. I know this isn't <laughs> normally a thing that happens, but man, my whole family is full of cold. Like even the baby. Uh, last night the baby's trying to sleep, and she's just like, you can hear her. She's just like full of snot. And she can't breathe properly it's like she's okay but it's just she's never had a cold before right so she's just like doesn't really know what to do but listen i got some uh i got some uh some tissues from waitrose Mm -hmm. and they are uh linen fresh (laughs) tissues okay (laughs) and man they smell like fresh clean washing it's insane like uh, the the smell is so nice like it's not overpowering either it's like a really sort of like uh you know like uh like uh, like an airing cupboard smell you know, right. some unusual product oh. placement for this episode. Well, and the, the <laughs> tissues are so soft, too, on my nose. Like my nose is red raw because I'm blowing it all the time. But I have to get me some. You got you to gotta try some of these. Like just the smell and like, man, it, it'll teleport you back to like being a kid. You know, like when you were a kid and your mom had the towels in the dryer and you and and she would like be like surprise. Here's some hot towels and like wrap you in it and it would smell all clean and stuff and be warm. This is what these tissues are like. It's fantastic. It's really good. Wow. No, I'm. That is a. I got any more recommendations for things lately that you've enjoyed? Uh, Go for it. No, uh, that's about it. Honestly, like uh, I had some Japanese curry bread. Right. That was made by a friend of mine. Yeah. It was basically just bread with curry sauce in it, and I was very impressed. I thought it was fine. Um, good. I I would give it. A, a seven out of ten. Okay, well, listen. Uh, these tissues, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give them a nine out of ten. Oh, yeah. Oh, is this only really good stuff? Let me try to think. Um, I played a board game yesterday, which I liked, called Wavelength. It's quite a cool board game. I think it was called Wavelength. Yeah. So there's like this rotating dial. You can look it up, right? Where What's it you called? have to wavelength? kind of wavelength. Where basically, like, there's a, there's a sort of like a dial, like a, a a left and right dial, and it's you see it's like it might be like a third of the way along the dial, right? Right. And then you get a clue, which is like more smelly or less smelly. Oh, okay? I see. Yeah. And then you have to pick something so that's like a third underwear. of the way along the dial, right? So that would be a great clue if you were playing it with your wife, you know, because she'd know exactly how. Well, she'd think smelly your I would, I think are. she would think the kids, because one of the kids is definitely oh. smellier than the other. Really? Yeah, the older like, one is is much smellier than the, the younger. Right. One. Like like so, like farting or just no, just it's general just teenager smell. Oh, of course. So yeah. so basically, imagine it was like two thirds or three or yeah, along the along the dial, or maybe like four fifths away along the dial. You would say one of the other kids' names and then underwear. And then that would let your wife know exactly how smelly the dial right. is. You see, and then she'd turn it to the dial, and then the other team get a chance to to to, to steal. So it, I see, I see. Wrong. Yeah, yeah. It's a good game. Actually, it's got lots of these little clues about, um, you know, is it more blue or more green? And you have to like pick something or like milk. We had this like half an hour argument about how curvy we all thought bananas were. It sounds like a very middle class thing, right. but it was a nice time. <laughs> I had a very nice time playing this game. How curvy do you think a banana is? Oh, on a scale to straight uh, or curvy? Uh, not all bananas are created equal, I would say. Like some let's, are cur- curvier than others. Let's say... A- I would say the maximum curve for a banana, the maximum, would still not be as much as a boomerang. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I didn't even think of a boomerang when I was thinking of curvy things, but I'd say a, cur- a, a boomerang was pretty much in the middle of curvy and straight, right? It doesn't yeah. have like, like a, got some... it's got like a triangular curve though, a boomerang, right? Like it's not like it's a, a... it's an elegant curve, yeah, but it's not more than it's not more than forty five degrees, I think. If I'm look, thinking yeah. about a boomerang now, it's not quite 45 degrees. It's just off that. So I, w- I would say it's rare that you see a banana that's like bent at the waist like an old man looking for change. Yeah. It's more like just an old it, man it, walking along. The curve will wow. start at the, at the tips on a banana for sure, right? Like a- you see, I'm with you on all of this. But a lot of, I think a lot of people would just say a banana is automatically quite curvy. No, but then they think not. about it and they're like, oh, They're not okay. that curvy. They're not that curvy. They're not as curvy as you think. There's definitely curvier fruit out there, I 
let's say. Like what? So yeah. I'm trying to think now. What could, well, let's have curvy? a look. Fruit images. Curvy fruit. <laughs> curvy fruit. <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, I mean, look at, banana, quite... look at bananas barely curved at all, really. It's quite hard to think about things that are curved. I mean, obviously, we've spoken about 90s women here for extensively, you know, and I might say Pamela Anderson, that would be. That would be quite far along the curve scale. I, I, would, I, mean, that would be... I, I would like to change my answer and say that the banana is the curviest fruit. Certainly that's in wide <laughs> consumption. <laughs> right. But it still is not that greatly curved compared to other curved right. objects. I mean, how curved does it need to be, though? Like, what? we're not... It doesn't... It doesn't need to break any records. Well, the problem is records. that like, you, well, you're given an amount on a scale, and you have to find something that represents that amount of curviness. You know, right. so it's often very. You have to be very precise. Oh, like boomerang. You know, like, like what's four tenths curviness though? Well, so, Jay, what's less curvy than a boomerang? Well, what would you describe but, as as a, a sickle? Ten out of ten curviness. Uh, uh, like a pig's tail or like a spring. Well, that's or not like curvy. Slinky. That's curly. We're that's now coil, into a very coily. different. Yeah, I mean, essentially, a curve has to imply that. It still maintains Fine, an its orange. Shape. An orange is the curviest fruit. No, that's round. That's no. not the same thing at all. What is a curve then? A what curve is, what is, is a line curve? that is not straight. Well, if the show I'm watching is to be believed, apparently Bill Clinton's penis uh, is quite <laughs> curvy. Uh, <laughs> a curve is a line that is not straight, and at no point does any part of the line touch any other part of the line, because that would be curly, curvy, would be curved without actually yeah, crossing. Like a curve. That's my well, okay. definition anyway. Well, this is a, this is why it's such a good board game. I really I really enjoyed these well, yeah, arguments. Yeah, but we just had. solved it. We, mean, we, 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 just, we just solved your whole stupid board I'm game. I'm still asking you what is the most curvy thing and also what is what is less curvy than a boomerang the most more curvy, curvy than thing. a banana. What was it? What, what 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 woman was it that had like uh she was like considered to have like the perfect curvature? Marilyn Monroe, surely. No, it was more recently. It was like Kelly Brook, I think, or something. Oh, Kelly Brook. Now you're talking. Right. Yeah, That's there a we go. Slightly yeah. more recent reference for you. There you listeners. go. <laughs> and even even then, that's like twenty years old. But yeah, still. I believe she's in. Her but but she had house. she had like uh, <laughs> apparently at the time. I don't know if this still holds true, but. Scientifically, she had the perfect uh, female body in terms of. No, oh, I'll curvature. be honest with you. It certainly passed all of my tests. I, I think I might have read that in Nuts magazine, though, <laughs> if you remember that one. <laughs> So I mean, take it with a pinch of salt. A, it was a scientific study by Nuts magazine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, the scientists at uh, Nuts. Yeah. Have a publication no longer in circulation due to. Uh, I think uh, legally they're not even allowed to make magazines like that anymore. Aren't they? I don't think. I don't think they are. Lads, why would lads, they, why wouldn't they? They've been banned. But we decided this. We worked this out last week. We decided that Hooters was fine because it stopped people from going to the more serious places. Nah, it's just a mean? gateway to get to the more serious places so you go to hooters no, a couple not. of times and then you're like man i need a blow big time like i'm going <laughs> it's time to go get a massage or something right. with a happy ending you know like it's it's just a game you think it's a game Do, i thought we decided it was fine i thought we decided it was like no, a safe... i thought about it more recently like uh, i can't right. i can't stop okay. thinking about it in fact uh, right, because there. we spoke about it for about an hour last week yeah there, are, see. there were a few uh what they call men's magazines um, yeah, there was, was obviously there was a, a magazine called Buck, which I'd never heard of. That did no, I never heard of Buck. Yeah, the chat. No, I never saw the that. chat. Nuts, which, nuts and uh, Zoo were the, the ones I remember the most. There was uh, there was Sorted, which was a men's magazine that went in two thousand and four and two thousand and seven. Sorted Magnate, Sorted. Magnate, a men's lifestyle magazine. I love the idea that that the guys making this magazine. This is for men who are aiming to be magnates. They want to yeah. be a magnate <laughs> of something. So. They would read a magazine to achieve that goal. They would read a magazine. A magnate. A magnate. You had, uh, remember, all, you had you had all the, the the glamour models that were the pinups for like uh, yeah like the, like the poster girls for those magazines. Well, remember like Lucy Pinder. Remember Lucy Pinder. Lucy <laughs> Pinder. <laughs> oh man. Zoo magazine. Yeah, Nuts yeah. magazine. Yeah. Sorted magazine. Sorted. I for think. men magazine. That's an Italian monthly F-H-M, magazine. FHM. FHM. I never. Yeah, uh, I, I, I never actually bought any of these magazines. They just happened to be around like in places i worked and stuff somehow like they were always like somebody had one on their desk or something yes. like, i don't i don't understand how they got away with it like it's just like that's the, the one of the most inappropriate things you could have on your desk clearly but there you yeah. go 
they well, were let's just be around. Honest, the, why did they die off? The answer is you can just look for pictures of tits on the internet much easier these days. That's, that's it. true. Yeah, that's, that's true. It. Yeah, I guess it was culture, though. You know, people who sort of bought FHM, you know, it's full of stuff like watch reviews and, you yeah, know, yeah. things like that. I mean, it was all macho. Your guide sort of to normal. cufflinks and, and like shit <laughs> yeah, like yeah. that, you know? Yeah, it's it too a- odd. What is one pocket square enough for the modern man? Or should he have a wardrobe of pocket squares? Our experts Lots answer. of men's grooming stuff too, right? Yeah. Like eyebrow balm and stuff like that. That was what it was yeah. like. Yeah, it was like modern metrosexual men rather than like posh men. I think it's straight away from the idea that you should wear a suit and stuff. And it was more, I don't know, they were just no, smartly they wanted dressed you to well-groomed. wear a suit, but not with a tie and like, with a couple of buttons undone. And then yeah. like, uh, you know, just like a pair like of- George Clooney. A pair of Converse with your suit as well. Well, like it's just yeah i mean I let, let's be honest it was a, a think... little bit of laddie the new lad sort of culture though like it was a middle classy kind of i don't know it was it was it was a bit laddie right yeah. like it wasn't clean it was it was quite estuary english kind of you know modern london men it was working in the city lots of students, lots of students. yeah I, I think there were there were different tiers you had nuts and zoo and those were for students and, and young lads then you you know you graduate to things like esquire and gq and stuff like that where suits was a big thing because now yeah. you've started a job but you still want to look good and you know the idea of men looking after their uh their grooming and stuff like that what's like, beyond that though men's health and you always have those people yeah that are then just you start with the gym on, and stuff on the, like that. On the yeah. front page yeah men's that doesn't health. seem healthy to well, me but men's fashion nowadays is is wank uh, i was complaining about this i think on twitter it, i might have even spoken about it on a previous fucking episode of this stupid podcast almost certainly <laughs> but uh, the, the color schemes stupid, for right, men's yeah. clothing is is dead it's black Gray, blue, brown. Oh, That's I it. don't know. I think if you're wealthy, though, you and you have like the penny loafers and the fucking uh, pink, pink uh, jeans and and you know like the purple shirt and stuff. Like you right. ever see those older guys? Yeah, they, yes, they're very that's colorful not, people. That's not men's fashion. Those men are rich enough and old enough that they have realized they just don't get. Yeah. They should just buy what the fuck they want. Yeah, and eccentric wear what they want. enough that they. But sometimes people. Need, when they're like that, they need to stand out. They're, they're forced to break fashion from what is normally accepted and look weird in order to exaggerate themselves and their personality and their image. Yeah, right? business. So yeah, wearing a bright red suit or something is not something that you would see ever in anyone less than Benedict Cumberbatch pulling right. off. Do you know what but I mean? If you look at, go to any though. high street website, go to any high street website or any, any online fashion site that is for the general consumption not the super high-end fancy fashion lads i'm saying most people if you look at the color schemes it's either a, a patented pattern like burberry or it's a series of three or four very 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 plain colors and i think it's a shame yeah i think it's a real shame i think the color color in men's fashion is is dead it's just like nobody wants to wear anything brightly colored it's all just plain 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 and it's depressing no i don't know i got like a couple of turquoise shirts recently and uh, <laughs> slow down yeah i got a bright orange shirt i had a, a bright bright yellow shirt uh, at one point too but uh, my uh my clothes disappear like i don't know where what happens to them you know like I bought a, a whole bunch of new socks like maybe two months ago. I don't know where they all have gone. Like they just slowly disappear. I, I don't know. Like uh, this, this whole concept of like, you know, the the sock monster or whatever. I think it's true because I, I don't know where all my clothes go. I Shirts that I've had, they're gone. I don't like maybe my wife just chucks them out after a while or something. I have no idea. But like I, I've definitely noticed that a lot of my clothes just go missing. And like, right. I'm not... You know, I'm, well, I don't want to go Sherlock Holmes. I'm not on this, careless but... with them or anything. I'm, <laughs> I'm not like taking whipping it off like while I'm driving down the street and throwing them out the window or anything. So, like, where the hell are they going? Well, if this was a Neil Gaiman book, they would it would be probably the fairies who were secreting them away. Uh, but since it's reality, uh, it's probably your wife who's it's chucking them because be, she's right? noticing they've all got like curry stains that she can't get. And she's out. in on it too because I every time I mention them, like, man, I haven't seen that shirt for a while. She's like, oh, she doesn't like see anything. Right. She's like, God, that's weird. I wonder where it's going. <laughs> like, oh yeah, <laughs> what? She's not directly admitting she just any responsibility. Threw it out, didn't she? she just like she probably slam dunked it into the trash while I was out here recording a podcast. You know, like and yeah, laughed. I think about if you asked her, too. she'd say she'd give you a good reason for it. She's not just 
slowly binning all of your clothes yeah, for no true, reason true. until you wake up one morning and there's just nothing left. You just get your dressing Man, gown. I feel like I just blew my nose into a dressing gown. This linen freshness is just... It's off the charts. No, just get more of them, knit them together, no, make yeah. your own clothes. Have you ever thought about making your own clothes? No, never. No, because I'm not a hippie. Oh my god! I want to try. I want to try my hand at making some of my own clothes. What, like a like do like a tie dye? Yeah. Have you ever do? Have you did you ever do that thing in school where you like iron on an imprint onto a shirt? You create your own T-shirt, like sure. Uh, you you like you 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 color a picture onto like a special kind of paper and then you you iron the paper onto a shirt. Yeah, and it, I have I've ironed a patch onto a right. shirt before. I did burn a shirt the other day. I was going to this I was going to this wedding and I was ironing and I haven't ironed for so long. I I, I didn't I just turned the iron to max and it just I put it down on the shirt and it just came off. Like I burned the whole of the black of it was all black on the back of the shirt and I was like oh my god it was only there for a second and I just couldn't believe it but apparently you can do that so be careful folks fortunately it was on the back of the shirt I'd started at the back and so I was wearing the suit at the wedding and it didn't matter do you guys ever have those but, um, t-shirts in the 80s that turn color like when it, they were hot like if you put your hand mm, on like a uh, shirt yeah, yeah. they like, turn color <laughs> sounds, bring those back well, like, those change color mugs as well pumps, that, you know. remember Reebok pumps you had like the, in the <laughs> tongue of the, the, the shoe it had like the you could like blow them <laughs> Somehow, like, do you remember Game Boys? Yeah, you could like do you remember Pogs. Yeah, do you remember oh, Jesus? What is this podcast turning into? No, I just it just made me think when you started talking about making your own clothes, it just reminded me of all the all the fashions gone by. What about they what never about come those, back either? Those things where it was like a dinosaur or something, and you got it wet and it got slightly yeah, bigger. Yeah, not slightly bigger. If you left those bad boys in a cup for like a week, they get huge. Like they would just be, a week. Yeah, what a fun toy. I Whoever know. Came up with that. <laughs> it was genius. They're fucking gross too because when they got bigger, you tried to pick them up out of the glass. They were disgusting. They were all slimy and shit. Like were now were they made of the same things that they make tampons out of? Because those things will suck up water like nobody's. <laughs> so you put one of them in a glass. They, oh they, they will fill the glass. They're massive. What came first, the the growing dinosaurs in the cup or tampons? <laughs> Do you think some some woman who was stuck she stuffed a fucking inflatable <laughs> dinosaur up her? <laughs> and then someone's like, we should invent tampons. This is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, Women man. left, right, and said, well, these dinosaurs to send you like hotcakes. <laughs> Why are all these women buying these dinosaurs? I remember my friend at school in elementary school one time complained to the teacher uh, because he said it was unfair that girls had their own locker in their bathroom. They had a locker in their bathroom, but it was it was a tampon dispenser. He thought it was a locker. Idiot. <laughs> Fuck, it was so funny. Everybody was laughing. Oh, man. You know, my, my daughter was saying, this is my, my nine-year-old, that the year that she's in, she's in year five, so they're like nine to ten. And they've started to have the, the lectures for kids about things like, uh, you know, puberty and stuff like that in school. So they're teaching them about that, all that kind of stuff. Now, I didn't realize this, but they separate the boys and the girls. And I said to her, why do they do that? And she said, well, last time we were talking about stuff and the boys were going, Whoa, like joking about. <laughs> Fuck and all the girls didn't want to ask questions because they were like, they didn't want to be the one that puts their hand up and asks a question. All the boys were like, <laughs> yeah, being all random. I was thinking, I hope they took those fucking idiots because I would have been one of those idiots because, you know, boys were fucking idiots. I still am Taking idiot, them to, to another group and say, all right, you guys can dick about what you like, but we're going to fucking teach you about this shit because you need to know. Yeah. Because the fact that so many boys grow up and don't know, oh, I don't know nothing about that, mate. Don't ask me. Hey. It is important. That's <laughs> yeah. your potentially your life partner. Well, you've got no interest in this this cycle that happens every month that you could fucking help out with. Don't just claim ignorance, you stupid bastards. I'm talking to us here, men. Yeah, well, I mean, at that age though, you just um, you just don't give a shit, right? Like, I mean, you I should. Didn't. I was I, all I wanted to do was just like joke around and like impress my friends and stuff. I didn't. How far fuck. does it go though? Do you talk about like having to rub their feet and have to like look after them? Do Who you does to, that? Do you, I didn't do any of that. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying. talking about helping out in terms of like knowing what to buy. Exactly though. How, maybe you're not doing enough. <laughs> is what I'm saying. I ain't fucking rubbing no feet. Give me a break, Good dude. This works. It pays you back. It's all worth it in the end, man. No, I'm just saying. 
You should give back. I gotta say, I've uh, never you know. rubbed feet before, but equally, I've never had my feet rubbed before either. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. It's not on my bucket list for sure. I ain't asking I for no foot rubbing. I don't really like the foot rubbing thing. No. Stay away from my feet, all right? Feet are for walking. I don't want to go near other rubbing. people's feet as well. They're really gross. Like, they get sweaty and stuff. Like, I know some feet, like, are better than others or whatever, but, like, I don't know. Like, I, I just find feet kind of gross you know like. sure well no i mean some people do then i'm not saying that maybe the foot rub maybe this is why we need some education some though, right? with, uh, what about like you what if you get somebody with like severe diabetes feet like come on i'm not rubbing those things what's a diabetes yeah, like when they get sores and shit all over them and like or they're bleeding that's le- yeah, those that's feet definitely need a rub no oh, um, leper feet. If your partner is uh, on their period and they have leprosy, what should you do? You know, these, these are the things that we need to There's know. There's got to be some um, oil or something that you can... They live on, on an island, it'll be don't the, they? It'll be in the Bible, I right? I thought if you have leprosy, you have to live on an island. So they've got plans for what they do at that time of the month, I I'm bet sure. you they rub each other's feet on that fucking island. <laughs> rub their, each other's feet some off. Some coconut oil. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah. Coconut oil, that's the answer yeah, that's it. to everything. That is, that's like, it's one of those home remedy things, isn't it? It's like, you know, oh my yeah, God, I've got not- severe pain in my leg. I should go to the doctor. No, no, just get some honey on there or like, you know, put some coconut oil on or something. Like, you know, that'll, yeah, I'm sure coconut- that'll help. Oh, It's supposed to be a thing that you can put on your hair and you can drink it and you can pour it up your butthole. <laughs> you can just rub it everywhere. It's fine. It's like, fucking drown yourself in it. Go for it. Don't do that. No. Um, well, you can. If you want, I'm not but... convinced about that. Yeah. I've got a jar of it at home, actually, of coconut oil, and I'm. I've. It's been in my cupboard for like two years, and I'm never. You can eat I'm it. Never. St- you can eat it. But you can. I'm always. Mix it it's into always like there, food right? And stuff. Yeah, but look. I'm like, why? It's just oil. Like, why well, don't want that in there? I've well, got I don't know. Yeah. Coconut milk and other We're stuff. We're the same. We got a big jar of coconut things. oil. It's never been opened. It's just fucking sitting there. No, it's not being opened. In winter, it it goes all solid. In it's summer, enticing it- sometimes, actually, because you look at it and you think, like, man, it looks like marshmallow spread, but it's not. It's just fucking gross coconut it's not. shit. That's yeah. when it's yeah. And then I've, in the summer, it's just what it's just like a, a jar of liquid. Yeah. And you're like, what can we use this for? And the answer there is nothing, nothing at ever. all ever yeah but i guess you only buy one otherwise they'd sell it everywhere wouldn't they if everyone was ch- chugging it down i'm not even sure you're supposed to drink it i guess probably really it's like bad a staple of a health food store right like they just have a whole aisle devoted to coconut oil in a jar it's and avocado oil yeah and yeah 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 walnut oil next to the limes and it's not and it costs like uh, 50 dollars for one jar like it's it's just coconut oil, but it's somehow more expensive than anything else, right? Like at health food stores, yeah. it's always the same. Ninety percent saturated fat, which is higher than butter, which is sixty four percent saturated fat, and beef fat, which is forty percent saturated fat. There you go. Nice, it's just fat. And on that bombshell, know. can I go and sit in the pool, please? Yes, yes, you can. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> thanks for thanks for taking time out of your holiday to record this. Have a nice yeah. holiday. <laughs> thanks for listening to this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Pete. Right. Alright, uh, all right. well, have a good week, everyone. We love you. Take it easy. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.